Alright guys, this is a long plane review for Space Ace on the Amstrad CPC. Uh, we're looking at the uh, Players Premier budget re-release box art here, and that was in 1990. Um, but it was released full price in the UK originally as Lee Enfield Space Ace. Uh, from Infograms in 1987, but this is actually a UK version of Bob Moran Science Fiction 1. And uh, we'll come on to the character and the name change and stuff uh, in a little bit. Um, but uh, Space Ace was one of the very, very first Zelic Spectrum games I played. I used to have to go around my grand's house in the summer for. Uh, uh, whilst my parents wanted to go and do fun things and my uncle ZX Spectrum was there. It had about three games with it. It had this one, uh, MiG-29 Soviet Fighter and I think Horace Goes Skiing. But I spent most of my time playing Space Ace and it took me many many years to remember uh, the name of this game. And, was very, and eventually, I, eventually we found it and I was very excited to find there was an Amstrad version of it and it turns out it's the best one and I think the original platform before being converted to the Specky and other computers. So yes, right, so originally this was released in France as Bob Moran Science Fiction. Uh, Bob, Bob Moran is kind of France's answer to Dan Dare meets Biggles with a bit of Indiana Jones thrown in. Um, so it was very popular in France with adventure books starting in the 1950s. There's been a film, TV series, computer games, and of course an animated series in 1998 apparently, and then graphic novels, um, but uh, completely unheard of in the UK. So um, I think so. A new character was created purely for the computer games from Infograms because they did a series of Bob and Ram games. So Lee Enfield was created, it shares the name of a famous bolt action rifle used by the British Army in the uh, early part of this century, uh, last century. And the Enfield character was used for two other Bob Moran games in the UK. I think Bob Moran Chevalry, I can pronounce it right, became Lee Enfield Tournament of Death, which is the second game. And Bob Moran Jungle became Lee Enfield and Amazon Adventure, the third one. There's one more Bob Moran game called Ocean, um, but the Lee Enfield name was dropped and was released in the UK as Operation Neptune. Um, both the UK and French versions of that game are extremely rare. There isn't even a box scan um, of the arts anywhere on the internet to be found. So here we go. This is um, a, well, um, target shooting game. And this is maybe very, very reminiscent to people who have played Prohibition, because it's by the same guys in the same year. Um, so we have the programmer William Henneboy, if I'm pronouncing that right. So yes, he did Prohibition. Two of the Bob Moran games for Infograms, and the Enfield games, and also a game called Championship Water Skin. Um, Music by Charles Calais. Again, he did music for Prohibition, Tintin on the Moon, and the other Bob Moran games, and loads of others for Infograms. But as you can see, guys, um, very, very, very smooth scrolling. Find the uh, bad guys, shoot them, and then you have this like end of level bouncing ball thing that you have to shoot before it gets too big. And there is Lee there. He goes in the space elevator to level two of four levels, so it's actually quite a short game, this one. Um, so yeah, Bob Moran, um, he, his story started a traditional adventure fair, like a kind of like a grown-up Tintin, 
uh, but quickly included elements of espionage, crime fiction, science fiction and fantasy. Um, I think Bob started as a French pilot for the RAF in World War II. After that became sort of an Indiana Jones type explorer and freelance reporter. Um, and then some of the stories became very science fiction-y, with him travelling through time and stopping other time travellers from changing the course of history. So I think this game is kind of a mix of his space adventures and time travel adventures as well. Uh, the story of the game is Lee Enfield, we're reading the uh, English version here, is Space Ace in the first in the Time Trouble shooter series, which uh, I don't think really any of the games of the series afterwards, uh, and introduces the first time on the computer screen a hero of the new age, Lee Enfield. Lee's background is varied and exciting, always there when he's needed, ready to lend a helping hand to a close friend or underdog, whatever the call, whatever the time zone. For Lee defies our understanding of travel, being able to jump the mightiest barrier of all, the barrier of time itself. So he now finds himself in the 22nd century in an attempt to rescue his old friend Bill. He knows uh, he knows his fight will be a tough one as he has to battle his way past robot soldiers, galactic monsters, snipers and abstract apparitions. And even after he smashes through these obstacles, he has to destroy the magnetic meteor globe, which we just did there, which throws his laser rifle's sights askew before he can proceed from one level to the next. Lee takes his chances, he has to. After all, you didn't get his troubleshooter badge for nothing. Will you be able to? Yes. Um basically then you have to you have to get rid of all your enemies that have been sent by the yellow shadow, whoever that is, to destroy you. You can see the sights for your laser rifle on the screen. It is very sophisticated because it shows you where your enemy is. Hence the arrows on the lights uh, on the sight there. Also, it gives off a ringing signal, which becomes more high pitched when the enemy is ready to shoot. So yes, guys. So there's a uh, there's a button there to like sort of duck or uh, hide or use a shield. So when the ringing gets really, really high, you might see me use that, like there. But as you, as it longer you use it, you can see the bar trickling down there from right to left. So you have a limited amount of shield there. Rather annoyingly, the button for the shield, guys, is the escape key on the keyboard, and the keys are non-redefinable. So that's going to be very awkward for joystick users, and you kind of need to use a joystick for this game because you're moving that sight across the screen, and it moves really nice and smoothly. And sometimes it can be quite hard to find enemies because we're using four colour graphics here in mode one for higher resolution, smaller pixels, etc. And it's a very, very nice detailed backdrop, and then finally we find it. So the characters kind of blend in with the background, so an unfortunate side effect of using mode 1 and having those higher resolution graphics are only four colours on the screen. Now just like it plays just like Prohibition really, and um, lovely, lovely silky smooth scrolling, some of the nicest scrolling I've seen on the Amsterdam in all directions. The crosshair moves really nice and smoothly, which is often a fault in a lot of these target shooting games, that the crosshair kind of moves in chunks and is not very accurate. But you could almost play this with a mouse, maybe. Um, uh, very, quite nice music on the title screen, and some interesting sound effects in-game. The sort of like random sort of space noises I think they're trying to go for. It kind of gives it a nice atmosphere. In fact, those sort of sound, random sound effects that will remind me of the Aliens game, if anyone remembers that. Mm. <laughs> so there we go. So there's four levels in this game, guys. Um, unfortunately, they do loop around with no congratulations message, which you'll see shortly. Um, I'm guessing this game came out after Prohibition and they quickly reused the game engine and code to bash this out quickly for the Bob Moran license, which became, of course, Lee Enfield in the UK. And then the Lee Enfield name was kind of dropped from the box art on the uh, player's premier budget re-release. Re um, I think you start with three lives. 
Um, but after, we will see them at the end of the game. I think the long play ends with me having eight lives in, left in total, with a score of 16,000 plus. So presumably you get an extra life every 3,000 points, maybe? Um, other versions, um, now the ZX Spectrum, which is what the first time I played this game, I had very fond memories of it. Um, it's actually a port. Um, uh, I really liked it at the time, but comparing it to the CPC version, it's quite poor. Uh, the monochrome backgrounds have like, been imported from the CPC version, but kind of made worse. It's very messy, and it's even harder to make out enemies. It's not as smooth, and it looks like a bit more zoomed in, so you can see less of the environment, which makes things even tougher and perhaps not as fun. Uh, for once, it seems the Speccy got, has uh, got a rushed port from the Amstrad, not the other way around. Hurrah! Um, this also uh, had versions done for the Atari ST, Commodore 64, DOS and the Thomson home computers which were quite popular in France in the early to mid 80s. As for an Amstrad action review, uh, unfortunately I'm unsure, I, don't, I can't find anything, I don't, don't think it was ever reviewed. But this is an enjoyable short fun blast. And. Um, if a little bit short, um, so I think I'm going to give this a score of a generous 7 out of 10. Uh, if you want to play a game like this, you want to play Prohibition. However, that game becomes way too hard too quickly and it makes it almost, it's pretty much impossible to complete, to complete Prohibition. And we've tried on the stream um, with snapshots and stuff like that and it is impossible. So if you want an easier version of Prohibition, come and play Space Ace. So there we go guys, it's now looped back to the first level, so I'm just gonna let myself die here. And what's nice is that when you do get hit, you get the flash of red and then the screen zooms to where the character, to the enemy character was. That's a nice little touch. Just like in Prohibition. <laughs> I do enjoy this. I think this is a, a really well made game. It's just too short and um, perhaps a little bit too easy. I do love how like the direction arrow appears on the, on the uh, laser sight there, the crosshair. That's good. So it's like dra drain my lives. Yes, yeah, so I think we've. Yeah, we ended with about eight lives, so you do get bonus lives at some point in the game. It doesn't give you any indication when you do get them. And you can't see how many lives you have left either, which is a bit annoying. And there we go, back to the title screen. And uh, the quite excellent music, actually. So there you go, guys. That was Space Ace, or Lee Enfield Space Ace, or indeed Bob Moran Science Fiction 1 from Infragrams in 1987 and the player's premiere re-release in 1990. And pretty decent. So guys, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget that uh, I will be doing live streams every Friday from usually about 10 o'clock UK time. And um, of course, we'll try and do more long playing review videos every Monday. But uh, yeah, this one's brought back some very nice memories for me. We'll just let the music play out and, that, and then we'll end. Very, very fond childhood memories. That's why I've chosen this one this week. And it's quite a short game, unfortunately. But uh, here we go. And um, very soon, guys, I'll be coming up to my 10th anniversary on YouTube as well this month. So watch out for some special videos and streams next week. Hmm. So there you go guys, thank you very much for watching, um, I'll see you all again very very soon, and make sure to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, etc and all that, and thank you all for your support as always. Alright, thank you, and goodbye. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that, if you did please click a like below, leave a comment, and also subscribe if you haven't already, and over that way there's another video for you to check out. Zypho, out.